free literary festival. One may to use the analogy of a centuries old free festival in this part of the world called the Jaipur Literature Festival, the Kumbh of Literature. I see this festival as modern India's celebration of the spirit of democracy. Democracy, ladies and gentlemen, isn't just about elections or street corner demonstrations. The fundamental building block of democracy is dialogue between divergent perspectives. Such dialogues through public debate, election rallies, or media analysis are at the heart of democracy. This festival has evolved into a unique forum where personalities of our times engage with writers and readers in a collective quest for exploration of new ideas. Last time around, we had Mahashweta Devi and His Holiness the Dalai Lama. This time, we have the argumentative Indian, our very own Nobel laureate, Professor Amartya Sen, as the chief guest. Another Nobel laureate, Dr. Vamos, in the field of medicine, will be joining us tomorrow. I feel honored to be here. I thought I would be sharing the dais, but he's here with us. I have read and admired Professor Amatya Sen, your works and pragmatic ideas on policy formulation. In the 1980s, Professor Sen perceptively noted that India had conquered famines thanks largely to its democratic institutions and the media. However, malnutrition persisted. In subsequent works, Professor Sen and Dr. Deris advocated the entitlement approach. It included society's entitlements vis-à-vis -vis the state to acquire food. The 21st century's India's food policy, drawing upon the entitlement perspective, envisages direct attack on malnutrition through, among other measures, the right to food. This initiative, to me, reflects the maturing of the nation's responses. Even as we celebrate the coming together of men and women of ideas, an emergence of new perspectives on addressing our age-old problems, we would do well to keep reminding ourselves of the diverse challenges before developing societies like ours, as also of the rest of the world. In a democracy, you may differ and disagree, and you have the right to do so. But you need institutional spaces for dialogue, and as importantly, institutional mechanisms to reflect the will of the people. We in India have taken democracy to the grassroots through Panchayati Raj, with reservations for the marginalized, leading to democratic decentralization. Democratic institutions at all levels are called upon to convert people's aspirations into workable schemes and programs. This requires mature reflection and hard work. It cannot be done at street corner meetings or through mob fury. Democracy, if it is to be meaningful, has necessarily to be accompanied by gender equity. Women in India have come a long way in the days they were considered free domestic labor and production machines. They are asserting their individual identities and demanding a voice in decision-making from panchayats to parliament, from the tribal villages to the growing cities. They have entered the mainstream and cannot be stopped. The response from the entrenched patriarchal social structures is violence in the home as well as outside, honor killings, atrocities, molestation and rape 
increasing in dangerous proportions. The lawgivers and the law enforcers are themselves turning offenders, the aggressors. Where are our norms of social behavior going? Where are those placed in positions for their protection? How are we as a free society, an independent nation, responding to these challenges? How is it that South Asia, where women have historically been worshipped as goddesses and continue to emerge as national leaders, also bears the shame of mistreating its women from the womb to the tomb. India's legal system is overburdened and overburdened with infirmities. Delays, discrimination and costs crush the citizens who seek justice and fair play, the enforcement of their rights guaranteed by the Constitution. The rich get away, the powerful dictate terms, while the weak